Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. It's just a fact of life. Make sure to follow me at BQ Speaks on Instagram and Twitter. Would have liked to speak on this a lot earlier, but the opportunity wasn't there for me, unfortunately, to do so. So let's talk about it now. Make sure to listen to the very end because I will let you know how I think this whole thing will shake out. This is a controversial topic, so please leave your thoughts in the comments as my opinions are likely to differ from yours. So Jeff Jarrett is suing Anthem. For the use of Global Force Wrestling content, the name, the belts, the logo, etc., etc. I'm not going to bore you with the actual details. You can find the actual link fairly easily on Google. I'm pretty sure most of you have already read the article and you know what all this entails. Although I consider myself fairly business savvy, this legal stuff is frankly a bit over my head if I'm being honest. But I can understand where Jeff is coming from. And as I've said before, upon him departing, that Impact was continuing to roll with some of his ideas, mainly branding the company as a global brand and forming partnerships. This was something that was Jeff Jarrett's initial vision for Global Force Wrestling years and years ago. Impact probably held onto the old Global Force belts a little longer than they we would have liked, but with good reason. Now, I really like the shows, but I have to imagine that the Global Force Wrestling anthology didn't generate the most income in the world. I'm sure the first episode and possibly the second did fairly well in the fight app, but these were $15 purchases we're talking about. They sold the DVDs on the website, and I'd imagine at some point they sold them at some of the house shows, but I doubt they were flying off the shelves. I believe he's trying to obtain six times the profit, if I'm correct. There's also the Global Wrestling Network. And I'm sure the name was a brainchild of Jeff Jarrett, although I think the network had been in motion for a period of time before that. They have kept the green W and ran with it instead of rebranding it when Jarrett left the company. Now, let's talk about his impact on impact. <laughs> 2017 saw some of the worst programming that the company had put out in quite some time, in my opinion. I think most of us remained optimistic and found parts of the shows that we liked, but we had basically observed Jeff Jarrett come on board, bring a lot of his guys over, as well as some, as well as some of the old TNA stars, signed Alberto El Patron, in an attempt to create some nostalgia, but something new at the same time. Now, one positive was the partnerships with Crash, Noah, Triple H, and on top of that, Jeff Jarrett said he was going to remain off screen. Now, towards the end, that started changing. He fairly quickly found ways to bury popular teams like Decay and DCC, and he couldn't find screen time for the new version of Aaron Rex or Jesse Goddard, who had just began to build himself with a lot of momentum as a potential single star. Now, he did bring us Diamante, KM, LAX, a few others still hanging around. So there were positives, but the biggest blunder was the rebrand to Global Force Wrestling. Now, I bought into it. I said, okay, if they're going to call him GFW, then let's call him GFW. Let's do it. It was one of the most complicated rebrandings they have had yet with the show remaining Impact. And even for a brief stint was Global Force Wrestling presents Impact Wrestling. So wrestling twice. We got the green ropes, which didn't look, look near as clean as they did on the anthology series. But other than that, the show didn't feel any different. I went to the very first taping under Jeff Jarrett thinking I was really going to feel something different. And when I left that night, I, I just didn't. Now, he did deliver us a great slam anniversary in 2017, but there were so many bells and whistles, not to mention it being in Orlando, that I'm sure the company lost money on the show. Jeff obviously was asked to be, or he was obviously removed from his position before Bound for Glory, which resulted in a mess of a pay-per-view and the subsequent tapings as well. Now, let's face it, as optimistic as I was, I fully believe if Jeff Jarrett had remained in charge that the company would no longer be around today. Compare the current house shows to the house shows that Jeff Jarrett put on. So how do I think all this will ultimately play out? I do think Jeff has a case here. I really do. I don't think any of the content regarding the belts will come into play at all. Although the merger was not official, I have to imagine there was some sort of letter of intent that was signed that will protect impact in most of this case. Now, I'm, I'm unsure 
if there will be some financial compensation on the fight side of the anthology series because there was an obvious intent on Jeff, on Jeff Jarrett's behalf to make it a four-part, one-night-only series. That was in motion when he was still there. I think whatever they did on the DVD side of the house, he could receive some compensation for that. I think the biggest effect, however, is going to be the Global Wrestling Network. I think we could see it cease temporarily and be renamed, rebranded, which would suck for the content that's currently being promoted on the WWE Network. It's quite obvious that the network still looks like it's being built around the Global Force Wrestling colors, so I think that we're going to see some sort of major change when it comes to the network. All in all, though, I think both sides stand something to lose in this case and neither side will come out totally pleased with the outcome. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling related content. This is the Impact Lounge.